Article 2 is statutory language. It's a collective bargaining agreement between uh, the school district and SESPA, the Seacoast uh, Educational Support Professionals Association. These are our paraprofessionals. Uh, we had negotiations this fall. Uh, they've agreed to a three-year uh, contract, which we appreciate in terms of predictability and, and, uh, and avoiding the cost of m multiple negotiating sessions. The three years are sandbornized here in the article. Costs look like 37246 in year one, 25575 in year two, and 23000 Could you slow down, please? Yeah. You're losing me. I'm sorry? It can be Could read. you speak slower, please? You're yes, losing me. Well, if it, and he's I, following it right off the... I can read. No, it's fine. Well, that's fine. Calm down, guys. Nathan? Do your best. No problem. Thank you. I, my no. question was going to be, it says estimated increase. David, David, let him do his presentation first. Yeah. So the, the costs, uh, according to sandbornization uh, and the statute, have to be estimated in each year of the proposed agreement. So this is a three-year agreement, 1920, 2021, and fiscal year 21-22. And new money, not total cost, but new costs related to the language in the agreement are estimated to be just over $37,000 in the first year, $25,500 in the second year, and just under $24,000 in the third year. The agreement, uh, the agreement, the costs of the agreement, the drivers, are these. First, the schedule of the day, the work day, the school day at Hampton Academy has grown over the last half dozen years. Simply the bell schedule starting and ending the day so that the Academy day is now 30 minutes longer almost than the elementary schools. But our paraprofessionals have been contracted for the same hours and so as part of the negotiations the agreement was to extend the compensated work day of the Hampton Academy para professionals by 15 minutes because to this year they're literally clocking in and then clocking out and leaving their charges, their, their students, their one-on-one -on -one responsibility, in some cases leaving them with 20 minutes or half an hour left in the day. So we're working to stagger schedules so that we have coverage throughout the, 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 that building but that was one of the challenges that we wanted to address in the negotiations. So there was there were costs related to adding the 15 minutes to a, a fraction of the of the class of of employees. Uh, another cost driver or savings was that the the, the uh, paraprofessionals have access to a site of service medical plan. They agreed to change the prescription plan from the three tier plan that they have now to a six-tier plan, which saves dollars on the premiums, they incur greater costs for their, their co-pays on prescription. That was a savings. They negotiated to add dental insurance for the employees. Any cost beyond that uh, would be borne by the employee if they wanted to add a spouse or children, members of the family. Uh, our district cost was mirrored after the uh, the current cost sharing for teachers and other staff across the board, 75-25, the district pays 75% of the dental benefit and 25 is borne by the employee. In all other categories, if, if, uh, if they are eligible for and take a two-person or family, it's a 50-50 split. But in this case, we only negotiated to provide the 75% coverage of the cost for the employee. We created a health opt-out to incentivize uh, f uh, participating employees that are eligible not to take uh, the not to take the health, they negotiated for paid holidays. One holiday in each is will be added in each year. So currently, they're not compensated for any holidays as paid paid uh, paid days. This agreement adds one holiday in year one. It adds a second one in year two and a third in year three. It was calculated into what the total compensation looked like, and salary increases, of, uh, salary and wage increases were agreed to at 1.75%.
we actually have a four-step scale, seniority scale, if you will, or experience scale. Um, and, and what we have done in this deal is that each year, step five, if you will, is created a new top step, which is a 1.75 increase, and the bottom step disappears. So as they move up, they, they gain a 1.75% increase in their wage. That's all, there isn't a compounding step and so the four-step scale moves, moves and moves, and what we end up with at the end of the three-year term is a scale that has four steps that are 1.75% apart. Um, and the costs for that, again, look like 37,000 in the first year. So the sandbornizing of the article provides those three estimates and then asks to raise and appropriate the 37,000 for this first year, 1920. Question, David. Could you tell me, please, <clears throat> how many educational support professionals are employed? We have, uh, because it's informative, we have special education aides that are working in the area of special ed, uh, generally one-on-one -on -one with particular students to help address their needs and provide support to them through the, the school day. We have regular education aides in the kindergarten classrooms. There's one in each of the seven, six or seven classrooms, depending on how many we have each year. That's, uh, you would more traditionally call that a teacher aide or teacher assistant. Um, and, that, and they are there to help with that age group with the teacher in that classroom. Then we have a smattering of uh, a handful of others who are really monitors by title, and they are lunchroom monitors traffic uh, crossing guard monitors in the morning or the afternoon. Um, in a couple of cases, they provide, they provide some additional teacher support in um, material preparation, um, photocopying, cutting, gluing, pasting, getting things ready in the elementary grades. So those are, those are the only other category is that our Title I federal funds drive um, some t tutoring, and, and that category is a paraprofessional. All told, it's a 48 um, in the last couple of years, um, 40, 48 individuals. For the, for the school year? Yes. Across those different categories Across of all those kindergarten, categories. special ed, Title I tutoring, and, and then again, there are five miscellaneous across the district that, that <coughs> are not regular ed or there are this person. What is their current range? Have reference to minimum to maximum reference to salaries, which would include all benefits, holidays, whatever you want to do. I'd have to. I'd have I'm to for the total cost. Uh, so the the the, uh, the top end salary is uh, just over twenty one thousand. The low end uh, is uh, eleven dollars and something cents per hour. Um, so at twenty two with twenty five percent roll up on the benefit side. Maybe, I don't know, it's not that rich. It's a $5,000 package that they have for medical, so 25% might be a little rich. There's no retirement package, so really the roll-up of taxes and, and other payroll expenses is probably not 25% like it is on well, a... Do you keep a total? I, I, don't have a total comp, I don't have a total comp in front of me, no. <coughs> um, because categorically the budget hasn't, we haven't managed it that way, and the, the, I can tell you what the salaries are, and I can go back and calculate, but... It's just not a document that uh, not a document that I keep day by day. I, I find it hard to understand um, when various leaders have come to us and you can ask how much are you spending on salaries or how much you're spending on this type of employee or that one. We can't get answers. I get generic, and I'm thinking right now what you're telling me is rather generic. I'd like to know the total cost of the 48 employees. <laughs> Because they're telling me a little bit, the needs which you're describing are really good. And it sounds like what they're doing are really good. But I think we still need to, over time, monitor do we have enough, do we have too few, and like that. But I would think you would have a total cost of this group of employees gets this amount of money and how many they are, and understand at the end of the year, because the taxpayers are paying the bill for these 48 people, which I think is a great thing we're doing. And I think we should have the information a little bit more explanatory. So how much is this bucket of people costing? It actually might be even saving us things. But I'm surprised we don't have statistics saying, because they're helping with this, they're saving this here, money, and they have that in data analysis type thing so we can understand what's going on. 
One of my concerns is the aspect of the increasing costs of everything in Hampton, and people don't seem to be doing do anything for process improvement. When you ask a direct question about something, you can't get a direct answer. If you were buying a car, and the sales oh, it's about this, would you buy the car? No, because you end up saying, well, I want this, or that, but does it include, and you get down to very specific details. And when I worked at Liberty Mutual, you would know what everybody was making on your team and what it cost the whole company. We need to know that. <coughs> so I'm surprised that it, we don't have that answer. And you're telling me you'd never done it. My question would be, why not? In, in professional categories with administrative and with the teaching ranks, we have at times in the past compiled and, and delivered, for instance, a, a total compensation document to, so that we are aware, to make staff aware. Honestly, in the paraprofessional ranks, at you know, 12 and 14 and $15 an hour, it, they haven't had a benefit package that was rich, and so generally the salary has been the placeholder for what those dollars really represent. As they negotiate for more benefits, absolutely, I would agree that the total comp is a is a document or a or is a concept that they ought to be familiar with as well as we, but we just haven't. Because you're putting it here, one point seven five. I think you said for the next three years. Of, was it three years or four years? Three years. Three years. Thank you. Yeah. And of course, a wage increase of one seven five each year. Correct. Each year, which comes to a total. Would you say was the total was the end of three years? Uh, if I were to add up three years. I didn't say, but it's 30, well, it's 50, 1. 70. Well, it's 1.75, but then you have to multiply that by itself, by itself, because it's not just 1.75, it's 1.75 went on, and that increases a little bit, whatever that might be. Right, with compounding. So you haven't, exactly. So you don't have the answer to that. No. I, I can pull up a calculator and tell you what 1.75 no, is compounded three exactly. times. I'm surprised you're not you're doing it and presenting it to us. That's my concern. All set, David? Thank you, sir. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, I, actually, uh, I, I want to make sure I understand yeah. here. They're on a four-step scale now. We went, in the last contract, we went from 10 to 7 to 4. So, yes, they're on a four. So what is, the, what is the percent right now as you go from step to step to step? What do they get with your specific today? Uh, I, I don't remember. No, no, I can tell you, and I can tell you pretty quickly. It's uh, that I have. Unfortunately, I'm using the device that I have those spreadsheets in. It's just over 5% between step one to two, two to three, three to four. Okay, so that's going to be supplanted by steps that are 1.75% apart? Yeah. And this is going to be effective uh, July 1st of 19? This will start July 1 of 19. Yeah. Now, okay. Um, and these estimated increases don't include the benefits? They include new benefits that are agreed to. And there's 37,246, for instance, includes yes. whatever benefit increases occur. It, 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 includes, it doesn't include the total cost now for all of the health insurance, for instance, the 10 of them take, but it includes the, the estimated savings of moving to the, to the cheaper prescription plan. It includes an estimate. We took a we took a poll and we and we estimated based on the number that are taking dental uh, taking medical now how many in the class we think will take the dental so we calculated the total cost of the new dental all of that is estimated in the Sanborn I think everything we could everything that we could foresee as a reasonable cost as we, a benefit as a benefit we put in so that thirty seven and twenty five what represents that yes okay. uh, let me make sure I understand this. Uh, um, so the school day essentially got longer by 30 minutes, so we're trying to compensate the people for that because they're here that long. Correct. Uh, uh, the three-tier to six-tier prescription drug plan, I don't... I can, if, if I take just a minute. So the prescription plan that they have currently has, a, has the same cost structure for 90, uh, 30 days at the local pharmacy or 90 days through the mail. Okay. And it's 10, 20, 45 for the three classes of generic or preferred brand or non-preferred formula. You know what I mean? The formulary? Yeah. They're moving from that to a six tier where it's more expensive, it's somewhat more expensive to get a 90 day supply through the mail. So now it'll be 
10, 25, 40 for the 30 day supply you can get locally at the retail and 10, 40, 70 for the prescriptions that they get through the mail. It's the same prescription plan that, is that it's the same prescription plan we've gone to with the rest of the district, so. It's more cost effective. Uh, it's far cheaper. Right. All set, Jerry? No, I have one. Dental insurance, does that include orthodontic work? The, the plan that is picked up does have a $1,500 lifetime max per lifetime? person. Lifetime? Yeah. And uh, the holiday, they're going to get one day this year, one day the next year. They're going to get a total of three and stop at three. We're not gravitating to 11, are we? We'll have to negotiate again. <laughs> we'll have to negotiate again in three years. But no, we're, that's... I can the comparables that they the comparables that they brought from the region uh, their neighbors here in the in the Hamptons at SC21 as well as the Exeter and, and to the north of us have a significant number of holidays um, not in 21 they've I think three or four or five now they've negotiated but um, but in Exeter they were higher nine or ten and so it was a meaningful element in the in the negotiation. But they're going to <coughs> they're going to steps that are one point seven five percent apart. Yes. Okay, that's all I have. Mr. Walbert. Did you just say that uh, prescriptions by mail are higher? Yes, for but you're getting three months as opposed to one. Yeah. 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 I went to prescriptions for ninety days and they're much cheaper. I, I've never heard of that. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. So, so if you, if you, if you, under the six-year plan they're going to, which again yeah. is the one everybody else in the district's got, if you have a generic drug, you can get one month for ten bucks at the local pharmacy, or three months through the mail for the same ten bucks. So yes, cheaper. But if you've got the non-preferred brand, you know the boutique drug, mm -hmm. to get one month at the local, it's it's uh, forty bucks, and to get it for three months, so at the mail away, it's seventy bucks. Could you repeat that, please? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the generic, a generic drug, um, high blood pressure medication that everybody's taking. If you ha if you go to the local pharmacy, it's ten dollars for a month. <laughs> you mail away, it's ten dollars for three months. Right. If I but if it's an expensive boutique drug, locally it would be forty dollars for thirty days, one month. Through the mail, it'd be seventy dollars for it's three still months. Still cheaper, ninety days. It, it is cheaper per pill or per you know per per service, but it's more expensive than today, which right. is a plan they have that the forty bucks locally for a month is the same forty bucks for three months through the mail, and this six tier costs less for the premiums for the total cost of the plan, and it's more out of pocket for the employee, and so Mr. we Walter. get savings that way. Yeah, I got it. Let me just make a, a comment first, and, and I got to commend David Moore again because word is out there's a new group in town now on this budget committee and in this town. We want things explained. We're sitting here. People go on their iPads, watch the replay of the meetings. I watch all your meetings. Half the time I walk out and I don't know what the heck I'm listening to. The other time I do. But we cannot, we cannot present stuff without a total cost package. So my question to you is this, so that I understand, for somebody who has been very much in favor of contracts in this town, okay, but we were part of a board years ago that explained things. We don't, we don't seem to do that. 1.7 raise for each year commencing July 1st, 2019, correct? Yes, 1.75. 1.75. Yeah. What, in addition to that, but it's the step increase or the average issue. If they are inside the scale now, yeah. and uh, if they're inside the scale now, it's roughly a 5% increase that has been in the existing contract. Right, per year. Per year, when they take the step. So what we're doing is, as people who are, the majority of them, overwhelming majority, 80% maybe, are top step, they get 175 in the step, and they continue to get 175, so that at the end of three years, we'll have gotten rid of the steps, the 5% steps, and we'll be on a grid that moves 175. I understand that, but here's, here's the problem, and it equates in a, in a strange way to what Mr. Marr brought up with the fiscal impact, that the public reads things. So Jane Doe on High Street reads this and says, oh, Mr. Lenny said the average or the top end salary is 21000 only a 1.75 raise without 
looking at or talking to, whether on a PowerPoint, the step increases. Then to David's point, the entire benefit package, that's what we deal with in corporations. That's what we present. We're not hearing that. And um, I was ready to vote on this tonight, but after listening to David Mara, <coughs> Uh, I don't know if we can wait to, uh, we need a vote tonight, but I just don't think I have enough information or understand it enough to vote until the public hearing, or maybe get it before the public hearing. The information that Mr. Mara is alluding to, if I understand you correctly, I mean, that was going to be my first question. How many representatives do we have? You said 48? Are they all full-time? 48 no. paraprofessional? There are a small number. Small number but of that's important. You see what I'm saying? We've got to have drilled down to information. We are in a day and age, uh, and I'm going to commend Selectman Barnes because when she's asked to get information, she drills down. And mm. we have got to do this. We've got, we've, got, we've got phones at our disposal. We've got Google at our disposal. We've got iPads at our disposal. We've got the new the School Boards Association, which is, you know, that's a thorn in my side itself. But you see what I'm saying? Right. I don't feel comfortable with the information. Right, right now. you're saying you have a question that uh, Nathan. I assume you can have delivered to us in the morning. I, I can. I, I can. would like to see the entire breakdown, including steps, the average, uh, the breakdown, and I think, I know in the warrant we can't list. All, I understand the, the language of the warrant, but we throw a lot of information at the public that involves money, and we've got to do a better job. To, it's a new day in town here. I'm telling you. So I would personally, you can do what you want, but. Than my other colleagues, but I'd like to see the more information drilled down. 48 people, how many are part time, how many full time, what's the total benefit package, what's the total increase for the school district? No mind just to raise the total benefit package, prescription spelled out more. Because I'll tell you, the people love that and they'll vote for it, much like when we did drill down on the oh, school district. Right. Right? Sorry. Nathan, is that information he's asking for? Is that something you can readily have available? I can, but I guess I. Yeah, it'll take me just a few minutes to put to, to lay it all out. The hard part's going to be, for instance, uh, what I really can't do, I don't think, is tell you, for instance, well, I guess I can in this class because everybody's only entitled to a single medical. But line by line, here's Johnny, and Johnny took the medical, and Susie's on the next line, and she didn't. Uh, some of that's HIPAA protected. I, I mean, I'm not sure I can tell you, but, but I guess I can. the step increases? That's what I'm looking sure, at. Oh, yeah, I can definitely do, again, so I want to make sure it's clear, though. The thirty-seven thousand is not a. It's not a. It's not funny money. Like that's. No, we understand. That's that's. So what you're describing is thirty-seven thousand might be, and I'm exaggerating. It's a million dollars today that we're spending. It'll be a million thirty-seven thousand tomorrow, because that's yeah. that's the all-in cost, okay. right, for all of it. So, but but to have that baseline so that you can see, like we did through negotiations. Right. Who are all the people? What step are they on? How many hours do they work? And what's their total? I mean, we did that in negotiations. I, all I, I guess, in my defense, this conversation normally takes 40, you know, 45 minutes all in. I'm happy for it to be a longer conversation. I didn't bring all that because traditionally that's... I mean, that's I, not been asked. I've, some years I've been asked not to say much at all and just get out of here, right? So well, that's not good either. But no, no, but I, so I can bring you more information. Hell, I bury him. Well, paper. that's I, it. Well, <laughs> you know, I, but here's I the thing, and it. you know what? We look at history in this town, and, and with all due respect, yeah. um, I've done 12 contracts in this town. Sure. So I know what, when you're saying what does year one mean, I can remember when Les was the, the CC negotiator. Right. And we, we understand that. So. Yeah. But Those of us have right been more. here, but the point is, I am about, that's why we started 20, Channel 22 in 1996, I'm about communicating to the public, and you know what, I don't, I'm not surprised you haven't been asked to bring information, it's the same thing with all the boards, just throw it out there, we don't, we're not transparent, so this is what we're asking for, if you want us to promote this, whatever information you can give to us, that is going to help us portray to the voters, as we've always done, I'm all for it. If we're not going to do it, that's your decision. It doesn't matter. Brent, I mean, Brent I'm, I'm concerned whether or not you need this information in order to cast a vote. Is that correct? I'm feeling like I would like to have it, yes. Like to or need to? I need to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'd like to comment too, Timmy, if you mind. Uh, Jerry, if you're on this topic of that information, and well, whether we suspend our vote tonight on this topic. Yeah, I, I, the thing that, that Brian brought up, uh, and, and Dave too, is, is 
we, we might be giving raises of, of uh, 6.75 percent to people that are in the steps. No, because they're not getting the 175 on top of no, the steps. It's on the top, but it's still you said the those are in the steps. They're going to get when they go from one step to the next. They're going to get a five a five percent. I'm going to throw 1.75 on that. No, that no, hearing? the top step's going to be 175. So that, the, and then the bottom step disappears. The intent was not to confuse. Hold on, hold on. I, I, listen, I, I, Nathan. Apparently, we need more information. Is that what I'm sensing from uh, the body? And I, I, I would like more information. Okay. Yes. So, Nathan, if you could deliver that information to us ASAP, yep. and we'll uh, we'll vote on that tomorrow night, I guess. We could vote tomorrow night, yes. All right. Okay. Is that the boys' will? Sure. Okay. Any other questions on this warrant item? No. I have some. Uh, on the structure of this article, you're listing each year's cost. It's called Sanbornizing, right? That's yeah. the yeah. legal BS term we use, right? Yeah. But it's just listing each year's cost on a multi-year contract. And this is required for all multi-year contracts, right? Collective buying agreements, yes. Well, multi-year contracts in general. Uh, uh, the language that I'm using is statutory for CBAs. I, I don't, I, I can't comment on their legal attachment to other. Okay. But, uh, but I understand, mm -hmm. I think I understand what you're suggesting or asking. Yeah, you want to stay away from the answer, I understand. This yeah. law was specifically yeah. written I know to there's address a special collective law for Hold the it. unions. I, I realize this, that. This was specifically written to address collective bargaining agreements because of the nature of the long termness, if you will, of their proposals. So this w did not relate to uh, lease agreements or. Uh, individual contracts that extend over time. It was never intended to do that. It was specific to collective bargaining. Yes, I understand that the union contracts. Right, right but are you're governed. assuming. Please let me finish. That union contracts have special RSAs that apply, unlike other contracts. I understand that. 